Aloha mai and welcome to the series premiere of Aloha Authentic. I'm your host, Kamakapili. To start off our series, we're speaking with Kelly Raichel from music to hula to other means of perpetuating Hawaiian culture. And welcome to Aloha Authentic, the newest show to KHON2 and KHI. Now, the Aloha Authentic is one of the only shows that you're really going to be able to come sit down, learn about Hawaii, learn about our native culture, our unique lifestyle here through cultural practitioners, local artisans, kupuna, community members, and so much more. Again, here on Aloha Authentic today for our pilot episode to launch this great show and our talk story sessions. We're here at the also oh beautiful Ali'i Kula Lavender Farm on Maui. But more better than that is the conversation we're having today. We're talking with our most Special guest we've ever had, <laughs> the one and only Kelly Rachel. Thank yeah. you very much for Aloha taking kaua. time out of yeah. your time. Aloha kako in the ka hui. Aloha. So we're, we're going to be talking story with you, and, and you guys will be learning about about Kelly Rachel, his music, but of course, how you are taking what you've done for so many years in terms of music and hula. So we're just gonna go straight into it. But before we do that, I wanna point out one thing. We have a bowl of poi in the middle of our yes. table here. <laughs> now the mo'olelo, the story with this, Tutu always used to say, when the bowl of poi is open at the dinner table, no negativity is spoken, only words of positivity, creation, and good energy. And that's exactly what you're gonna be getting on this show. So every show, we'll have this bowl of poi. We invite you to get your own bowl of poi and eat along with us. Now we got that out of the way. Okay. <laughs> We're just going straight into this. First again, thank you very much. Mahalo ya oi. You know, for you, and for me as a little kid, I can remember the image of your first album, Kawai Punehele, is ingrained in my mind because that's one of the first Hawaiian music albums that it really sparked my interest in Hawaiian music. That was a, a, quite a while ago. From, from there, can you just share us what sparked you from coming from the hula realm and the native Hawaiian community realm and becoming a recording artist? Well, I think the term recording artist is, was uh, uh, foreign to me at the time. It wasn't a goal. It was at the time uh, there were songs, personal songs that I wrote um, that reflected a certain period of my life that was kind of difficult to go through. It, was, it had to do with heartbreak. It had to do with separation. It had to do with hurt. Uh, yet at the same time, amidst all of those emotions, uh, I wanted to honor our culture, our, uh, my family, and the island that I'm from, which is here, Mauia Kamalalavalu, yeah, Mauia Pi'ilani. The whole goal was to uh, get into the studio and record brand new songs that could be used within the hula realm, because I'm a kumuhula. And I also needed to get all of that emotion out, yeah, through music, through poetry, uh, through lyric, and being that I'm human and everybody else is human, you know, that hopefully that they would connect to the same emotion that I was going through. Mm -hmm. And that there's a way to um, uh, move through that journey that can be difficult to do so. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes music can be that medium. Mm -hmm. And so that's how Kawai Punehele was born, which by the way, uh, uh, this year marks its 25th anniversary. Congratulations. Where has that time gone? gone? <laughs> you know, you know the one thing about this kind is that, you know, once you're in the public eye, you know, whether it's all the time or once in a while, you know, people get to see you age. <laughs> you know, so I get my Cruella de Vil gray streaks now, and over here still all salt and pepper. You know, I can still wear malo, but it's okay. <laughs> well, f you know, from there till I think your last album was 2014, right. you've created 15, 16, 17 albums since then. And your music in particular has reached across the globe through movies and so forth. And f for me in particular, I always remember growing up, it was you and Brada Is in my mind that your music reached for the farthest. For others to hear your music, those who may not be Hawaiian and not necessarily know what you're talking about, but you're bringing it to, your, to their attention, well, what does that mean for you? What is your kuleana in that? I, I think, um, you know, that wasn't the, the uh, primary goal. Yeah, the primary goal was to have something to say, um, to connect to people, to perhaps um, 
help them along their life journey through music. You never know what's going to happen with whatever it is that you're going to do in your life. If you had told me when the album first came out or as we were recording it, that we would be having this conversation today, that all of the, if you want to call it successes that have occurred um, within that 25 year period, um, what it was going to occur, I would think you would be nuts. <laughs> yeah, because that's never should, and it should never be a goal, mm -hmm. that kind of success. If you happy with what you put out, um, and it's meaningful for you, then, you know, if only my Mata bought the CD, I would have been <laughs> totally happy, you know. And I truly believe that I was at the right place, at the right time, with the right sound, with the mm -hmm. right look. Mm -hmm. I really believe that um, we, you know, no matter your, your race, your creed, uh, your color, we all get red blood, we, our cocoa is all the same. Um, we all experience the same kinds of emotions. So whatever it was that I was going through at the time, also, um, perhaps underlying, even though people didn't understand the language, they felt that particular connection. And I think that's kind of what occurred mm -hmm. with that first album. And so it changed my life. I mean, you know, I couldn't, I couldn't walk down the street. Uh, people were stuck <laughs> in my house. They would do drive-by um, listenings as we would do rehearsals. You know, um, Beverly's got stuck got stolen off of my, my clothesline. That's where the clip was. <laughs> so, well, there, yeah. There's so much, I mean, you, you have done so much then and you continue to do stuff now. Now, Kelly, he might not be as active in music nowadays as he was in the past 25 years, but that doesn't mean he's not active in mending Hawaiian culture into today's world. Stay tuned because coming up after the break, we're going to be going into another art form that Kelly e does, which is called kipu'u or nodding and, and types of weaving. Again, that's coming up right after the break, right here on Aloha Authentic. Aloha and welcome back to Aloha Authentic. I hope you're enjoying it so far because this time we're gonna learn, we're gonna learn, well at least I'm gonna learn something and you guys can learn at home as well. Again, we're here at the beautiful Ali'i Kula Lavender Farm with Kelly E. Reichel. Hey, brother. Now, we were talking about music, but as we mentioned, you do things outside of music and in today's world, you continue to mend Hawaiian culture in a contemporary world, in a contemporary means. You have all this beautiful art, which we talked about as kipu'u. Yes. I see you doing a lot of work. Could, could you teach me a little something as we vala out and talk story? A uh, little bit. Okay. Can, can, you <laughs> can you walk in chew gum at the same time? Not all the time, but okay. we're hoping this one time <laughs> we can do both. <laughs> okay, so um, this is the beginning of what we call a pico, because every, every one of these nets, uh, you start from the pico just like you do with a child. So you always, you're right-handed, so you're going to keep um, your bundle on your right side, okay. your tail, your huelo, on the left side. Yeah, and you gotta bring up your bring up your feet with our ugly toes. Should have yeah. worn shorts today. <laughs> ah, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> okay, then you're gonna hook it okay. onto your toe, like that. So make sure this is a little bit longer. Long. Okay, right okay. there is good. Okay, you're only gonna do a few passes. Okay. All right. So the the trick is just like making lehaku. Okay. You gotta um, hold that and keep keep a good tension. Okay. You're gonna go with your hand. Okay. Go under. Yeah, and you're gonna grab that. This one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Grab. Yeah. And then you're going to do like a, what they call a half hitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Then this here, so you can leave your huelo alone. Okay. So this, this piece here, you're going to bring it down. Yeah. And then you're going to just go across, behind and across. Yeah. Okay. You just go like that. Okay. So you do that. Then you clamp it with your finger. Okay. And then you're going to go over again. Grab like that. them. Bring them through. Make a half hitch right next to that. So the loop that we already we make as we yeah. go over. Okay. Yeah. Don't worry about these loops because we, we're only getting the technique. Okay. Okay. And you're going to pull this down. Just your main, your main cordage. Okay. Bring them through in between the two. And then like that. And then over. Yeah. Hey, not bad. All right. Oh, this whole art form. This is something we don't see very often. I mean, I see, you know, like growing up, the, those glass balls hanging up for the right. roof and this kind. Tell us a little bit about what this is all about. Well, you notice that there, there are nets that hang um, and, and have a gourd in them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, or a umeke. And, you know, in, in ancient times, we didn't have drawers. We didn't have closets. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes we would utilize this to um, uh, store clothing, store food, uh, 
would, would hang it up on a haka like this behind me. And then that way we had easy access to our clothing, our food, whatever storage or tools, whatever storage we needed. Mm -hmm. And if it was food, it kept it off the ground away from rats mm -hmm. yeah. and away from the bibish, mm -hmm. as we call it, <laughs> <laughs> and stuff. What you're looking at here is actually the ali'i um, that was done for the ali'i. They're a little okay. bit more ornate. You have what we call the pupu knot, which is the barrel knot. Okay. So this is a close, close knit barrel knot. Um, that's the the uh, the usual barrel knot that we have, the pupu knot that we have, and that's a big enough gourd um, that you can store clothing in. So when you say ali'i, this whole art was for ali'i, or there's certain types of knot or certain types of things that you're netting. Well, we think that certain families were associated with certain knots, and so oh. it became a visual symbol. Really. Okay. Um, and then so you, the commoners would use what we call this kind, the makainana, would use what the, the, the plain type of net, uh, netting. We call that kokopu alu. Okay. Yeah, kokopu and so alu. they were able to do that. That was very common. These fancy knots over here were reserved for ali'i only. Then that way when a retinue or when the, the household moved from place to place for whatever reason, all of their belongings would go with them or their, their supplies. And by visual alone, as they were walking in procession, people knew to steer clear mm -hmm. because they saw that this was pupu nuts as well. Oh, okay. yeah. Now you do this a lot, you do it in, in your hula. You're continuing to bring Hawaiian culture and mending it in today's world. What, is, what are you hoping from the things that you're doing that you get to share and come across with your audience? Well, e everything that we do um, is for the betterment and for the, um, the hula mua'ing <laughs> of, our, of our culture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I just happened to have a knot propensity. This particular art form almost died. Okay. Um, when I started um, re rediscovering it with Uncle Val Ching and a few others, uh, a few year, about a decade back, there were only four or five people in the universe that knew how to do this. Really? And so over the years, I've been lucky enough um, to take a look at the very old ones that come from, um, that are in the Bishop Museum, mm -hmm. and um, crack the code. Yeah, because most people didn't know how to do all the, uh, the, the variant knots of mm -hmm. the pupu'u. And so I would spend hours and hours tying, untying, tying, untying, and then I would get the knot, and I'm like, ooh, okay, got him, got him, now how I did him. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I gotta remember, gotta and, remember. And so as I cracked each knot, I made sure that I videotaped it, or, and I also taught it to somebody who had, had a propensity. Mm -hmm. And one of those, um, one of the greatest exponents of this particular art form after I taught him the basics, was, is Taupuri Tangoro. He's taken the art form to a different level, where he creates clothing out of these pu'u pu'u knots, an amazingly beautiful ceremonial, what we call a'ahu. Mm -hmm. And um, in his thought process, the human body is then the vessel. Okay. Yeah, to be, to be put into the net for aesthetic purposes or ceremonial purposes, and sometimes okay. both at the same time. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. I got one more without you keep showing going. me. I think that's the right. <laughs> but yeah. I wish we had more time. I mean, this <laughs> is such ono conversation. Now, again, this is a, an old an old art form that Kelly continues to bring into in today's world and, and hopefully gets to relate. My hopes is, you know, doing things like this, especially those who may not necessarily be uh, connected so much with Hawaiian culture, that this can spark interest for them to learn more. So mahalo nui to you for doing mahalo. things from music to this and inspiring people like me and even our next generation of Kiki coming up. Mahalo for you guys for watching so far. Stay tuned because coming after the break, you're not going to want to miss a special performance. I'm not going to tell you what song. You're going to have to wait to see for yourself. Coming up right after the break, right here on Aloha Authentic. Welcome back to Aloha Authentic. I hope you enjoyed what we've been learning so far. Now again, we're here at the, oh my gosh, this is a beautiful farm. Ali'i Kula Lavender Farm on Maui, a perfect scene and a perfect place to come and check out for yourself. But now, when we first started this conversation, Kili, we were talking about your first album and what led you into this 25 years from that point of music and hula and sharing your stories around the world. This album, what pushed you to actually start that album to become a recording artist? <laughs> there's, there's so many pieces to that puzzle to answer that question. Um, one is, it was a dare. It was a dare <laughs> from my friends. Uh, I was singing in the shower and they were all like gathered around the, the, the door. And when I came out, they go, wow, brah, you wanna write that? I was like, yeah. And you know, I was going through some um, really difficult times. Um, they go, you know, you really should 
you know, do something with that music. It's really, really beautiful. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. And so I said, okay, you like me do an album, come up with the money. Anyway, long story short, we sold shortbread cookies. We sold um, taro bread. And then we borrowed some money from some friends and, you know, and wow. things like that. And hoping that we would just break even. Everything went kind of like off the charts the first day that it was released. What if YouTube and Facebook was there back then? Uh, <laughs> interesting. Story. That's an interesting, interesting thought process. I don't know. No. Yeah. Oh, I, I think it was a different time. And so I think that if I came out yesterday, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have the same impact. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like I said earlier, the right place, right time, uh, right look, mm -hmm. right sound. So Kawai Punahele really is just one particular mele that talks about my journey through an emotional breakup, uh, through a physical breakup. And um, Kawai Punahele was actually written on a cliffside um, uh, in Kohala when we were doing 24-hour um, vigil chant um, ceremony. And I had just gone through this. I was ready to just jump off that cliff. Not literally, but, you know, mm -hmm. that was hurting. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, all of a sudden, this, this melody came into my head and some words came into my head. And I knew that it was something important. Uh, so I ran back to the car to look for something to write on because all the words came all at once. And so I was running around the camp going, anybody get pencil, pen, 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 Russell, pen. Russell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and all somebody had was a pencil, a pen, and a, a Jack in a Box um, or Burger King napkin. Wow. So five minutes. The whole song was written from beginning to end with the, with the tune and everything. Mm -hmm. And once I started singing it, I felt better internally. We hear this music for years and years and we don't know those behind well, the scenes you know, they make me sound old. <laughs> no, no, no. I was only two at that time. <laughs> Whatever. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Mahalo Nui, again, we're, we're, we want to listen to this song again. Something that started for you, of course, started for us to be connected with you. So for you guys, friends and family at home, sit back, enjoy yourself. Kelly Iraishao singing Kawai Punahele. No e Kawai Punahele Kule aloha mae ole Pili hemo ole Pili pa apono E huli hoi taua E kawai punahele No e kawai punahele Tule aloha mae ole Pili he mole Pili pa apono E huli hoi taua Kawai punahele Ku o e meke ki e ki e I kanani a o vailuku Tu i po heno heno Tu vehi o kapo E huli ho i taua E kawai punahele E ia ho i o te rii Kale ana i ka meha 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 ho i au E ha e ha ho i au E huli ho i taua Kawai punahele, Kawai punahele Puana ia te aloha Kule aloha mae ole Pili 
hemole Filipa apono e pono hoi taua e kawai puna hele Puana ia te aloha Kule aloha mae ole Pili hemo ole Pili pa apono Ke pono hoi taua E kawai puna hele E Welcome back to Aloha Authentic. Mahalo Nui for joining us on this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I sure know I have. Now, for you, Kelly, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Hi. For Mahalo taking nui. your time. We have that for you, but we also have... I know I love chocolate chip cookies, so we got to give it to you. So I was walking through Foodland the other day, and I seen these cookies, Donna's cookies from Honoka'a. It looks onolicious, but I'll let you <laughs> indulge yourself. Right, mahalo. Than be... Fat bombs. <laughs> now, mahalo. aside from that, every end of the show, we want to highlight a local artist and, of course, support local. So for this one, we want to bring attention to Lehuele Products. You're only going to find them at Made in Hawaii Festival or online at lehueleproducts.com. Now, they're beautiful, everlasting ribbon lays, perfect for every occasion. If you watch Aloha Authentic, you'll know I'll wear them quite often, so check them out. Again, mahalo nui, stay tuned. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook to see what's coming up in our next episodes, and of course, whatever things that we're posting. Mahalo nui loa, mahalo nui loa mahalo to yale. you. Aloha, ahui ho, and have a great day. Aloha. Mm -hmm.